Hey there everybody, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to learn a little bit about the graph editor and how to add a bit more refinement to your animations. We're gonna go ahead and discuss the graph editor as well as the speed graph and the value graph. So we're gonna dive right in with the value graph to talk a little bit about that and what the graph editor actually does. So I'm gonna go ahead here and I have a two asset kind of setup where we're going to animate these across our screen. And so to start, we're gonna go ahead and highlight both layers, hit P for position. And at the zero frame mark, I'm gonna set a keyframe. I'm gonna then go to the end of my, or roughly toward the end of my three second animation and drag those across the screen. So they both touch the edge of the screen at the same time. Now, if I hit space bar, what you'll see is we have a pretty evenly paced animation. It's very robotic. The computer is doing a lot of the work for us, etc. Now, what I also notice is when I click on each asset, you may see all these little dots. Now, each of these dots is essentially a frame or a picture of animation. And I want you to think of like a flip book for animation. So imagine a sticky notepad and every single one of these dots is a new drawing. The spacing in between these are relatively the same. This is giving us a very robotic kind of methodical look. And what you'll notice is both of these diamond shapes reach the edge of our composition roughly at the same time. They're exactly the same, they're very evenly spaced. So how do we manage to make this look different? How do we change the illusion of speed? And this is where you could do a couple of things. If I hit you on my keyboard, I could go ahead and add different keyframes. So I could go back in here and as soon as I add a new keyframe, you'll notice that some of these uh, are clustered now and a little closer together. The closer together that the keyframes are, the slower it's going to appear to move. But that is starting to add a lot of different keyframes. So what we're gonna use is something called the graph editor. And we're gonna just play with the top layer right off the bat. The graph editor is located in this little icon right here on your timeline. And when you open the graph editor, you're gonna notice a couple different things. You get a whole new grid system as well as a lot of different buttons at the bottom, which we'll kind of go through. Now, to start, we're gonna play with something called the value graph. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make sure that my graph editor is set to edit value graph. And by doing that, when I select position, you're gonna notice that I get these grids. Now, what these graphs and this grid is essentially showing us is here, the anchor point is roughly around 280 by 256. So you can see it's under 500 pixels. And as we go, this red line is denoting the X position, which is the left and right position. So if I were to move that keyframe up to 1,000, that means this dot is now at roughly 1,000 pixels. So the red line is your left and right values, whereas the green line is your up and down values or your Y position. Now that does not move because our animation, to be honest, does not go up and down. So by doing this, we see we have a very straight rigid line, which is telling us we're gonna have a very even robotic animation. So if I look down at my graph value, you'll notice I can go ahead and select these and you've already seen me grab one of them and move them. I also have the ability to hold my Alt key down and click on those to kind of adjust the different settings. So if I want to, again, you know, go to my Alt key and play with those, I can. But as I click on the keyframes, I get a lot more options. And so some of the options I see is I can fit my selection to the view. So if you're having trouble seeing this selection, you can use the fit keys. We're gonna skip over this one for the time being. We can kind of play with the different types of keyframing. So if I wanna add Beziers, for instance, I could click this audio, auto Bezier, or my favorite three tools are the ease tools. Now I want you to notice where each of these lines are pointing. This one will give me two Bezier handles. So let's use this far right keyframe. So if I want a Bezier handle to the left, and you'll be able to see right here that we now have the ability to kind of get a little more curve when we hit these setups. So again, if I were to hit this one, you'll notice I'm getting kind of a scoop now. And so let's go ahead and watch this. One thing that you'll see though, is I don't really have much control over that curve. To get this control, I'm gonna use something called separate dimensions. When I click on separate dimensions, 
This is going to access both the X position and the Y position. And I really enjoy having this because for instance, I don't need any up and down animation. So I can actually just delete that keyframe and focus solely on the left and right. Now, when I click on the keyframes, I'm gonna get a Bezier handle, which by stretching, you'll notice that I can actually manipulate the spacing between those keyframes, which is really nice. I still can use my kind of auto handles on each keyframe if I wish. So if I wanna kind of adjust this and then get kind of a nice speed change, I can absolutely do that. And by playing with these handles, what I'm doing is changing the distribution or the ramp up of value. And the closer the dots become, the slower it will appear, the further away the dots become. So let's make these super far away. It's gonna look, kind of look a little funky, but it's going to appear a lot faster in the long run. And that is how we would edit those Bezier handles. And this is actually the introduction to getting some weight and speed variation to your animations themselves. So if you look at the animations now, both animations still end at the same time, but you can see they appear to move at different speeds. All right, now that we have that happening, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about speed graph. So there's times where you want to just adjust the speed visibly without worrying about the different values. Now this still deals with values in the graph editor, but for this lesson, I'm gonna go ahead and set a few position keyframes. I'm actually gonna set four of them. So I'm gonna kind of make a diamond shape with this diamond. And as you see, as I continue to, to kind of set this up, I'm actually set five here. I'm gonna copy this keyframe, Control C, and then Control V just to make sure it ends. You'll notice I now have kind of this looping circle. All of the keyframes are evenly paced, but what you'll see immediately is I can manipulate these points and they have Bezier handles right here on the screen. The problem is when I click on a keyframe, both points are manipulated. Well, if I only wanna break the handle and manipulate one point, I'm gonna hold the Alt key down. And I'm gonna go ahead and just by holding the Alt key and clicking once and letting go, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up this animation. So click on the handle. You'll notice if you click and then let go, you can do that, click and then let go. There we go. Oops, double click there too much, too many times here, awesome. and then we'll click and let go. And then we'll get this top one, click and let go. So what we're doing essentially is we're breaking these handles, but we're allowing ourselves to adjust the motion path. And by adjusting this motion path, we're actually gonna get some pretty special animation within this. So let's watch it again. So now we get kind of like it's following that curved path, but you'll notice it's still really evenly spaced. And no matter what I do, even though I played with these handles, you'll notice like in the graph editor with the value graph, when I played with the handles, it changed the speed. In this case, it doesn't manipulate the speed. So let's hop into our graph editor and open that up. And this time let's use the speed graph. So we're gonna make sure we right click and say edit speed graph. I'm gonna then highlight all those keyframes and I'm gonna add the easy ease to them. Now what this is gonna give me is now the ability to adjust the speed. So it's gonna look a little different than the value graph. You notice the value graph was more of like a straight line that you played with kind of an arc with. In this case, we're going to just pull these in. Now all the keyframes are selected. So if I wanted to do this individually, I could simply click in and click in. And what I'm doing is changing the speed and the influence. So let's watch the difference. Now we have a little more, you can see the first couple keyframes go a little faster than the last couple. So this is actually changing the speed. So if we really wanna make it kind of ramp up here at the end, you can see it goes a little faster. And so now you can see the spacing has changed, but so has the distribution of speed. Now, how can we make this even more wild. Well, if I double click on any of the keyframes, let's say I wanna ramp this up right away, I can go ahead and make the speed from the start maybe 5,000 
kind of pixels. So it's gonna go really quick, five thousandths of a second. So if we wanna change the speed, we can go ahead and type some numbers in. And you know, if we wanna do this really to all of them, maybe this one will do like 500. And we can change the influence of that. So if we want like 90, you can see it changes some really funky stuff. So now that one's going a little slower and then those go a little faster. So that's the benefit of the speed graph. Now, if I were to edit this and go back to the value graph, you're gonna see that my value graph is looking a bit funky to say the least. Now I still get the same animation, but it's needless to say pretty wild. So you wanna make sure that you know, you're know you aware of what graph you're on because some of these can be a little bit jarring if you're looking at the wrong graph, not realizing if you're on speed and value. But essentially both of these ways are ways to manipulate the speed and the timing of your animations to get a little more appeal and variety out of them. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and you play around with the graph editor a little more and I'll catch you next time.